It's time to get your geek on with Dave Gramellion. Mr. Steven Stanton, I want to thank you, sir, for taking time out of your day to come speak to us here on uh, Freedom 1160. How are you doing, sir? Hey, David, I'm doing pretty good, and uh, happy anniversary to you and your wife. Aw, thank you. We just got, ah, I'm all geeking out now over here. Okay, let me let me return to my professional self. Uh I got to ask, in regards to this Clone Wars news, now that we're getting this rebirth, this resurgence, of course, you probably knew and kept it under wraps, but what's your first reaction to seeing the fans react to this announcement? Actually, I didn't know anything about the, uh, about it. It was, uh, it was brand new to, uh, news to me today, just along with everybody else. Um, it, was, it was very exciting to hear, though, and I love the fans' reaction. It was, uh, it was great to see. But, yeah, they're... Lucasfilm, Dave Filoni, they're great at keeping things under wraps, and it was uh, it was a surprise to me and a wonderful surprise. So, what was your first reaction? I was I was stunned. You know, it was uh, it's great to hear though because you know we the the show had such a loyal following, and you know you think back now, like ten years ago, ten years ago we had fans that were like you know eight, ten years old college, uh, have jobs, they're adults, uh, some of them married and have their own kids, and uh, it's, it's great to see um, them having the chance to finish, finish that show the way Dave Filoni always wanted to, because the fans always felt like, well, it really didn't wrap up the way they, they hoped it might, and now it looks like we're going to get a chance to see that. Well, let me ask the obvious question. Have you been approached to come back and reprise your role either as Tarkin or maybe even do a little Obi-Wan Kenobi work? Hey, you know, it's like I said, this is all new to me. I haven't uh, I haven't talked to anybody first I've heard of it. So I have no idea where it's going to go from here on in. You're talking to somebody that I may as well have been sitting in the audience with the fans because <laughs> I, I didn't know anything about it until today. That's, that's incredible. I love it. So you're, you're getting the news as, as fresh as, as we are. All the reactions are fresh. The emotions are fresh. Although I imagine it's a little different for you seeing as how you've, you've worked with, with so many of these, these characters and actors over so many years and worked so closely with Dave Filoni. How much of this, just asking on your speculation, how much of this do you think was Dave fighting to get this series back? And how much of it might have been the fans' impact? You know, it's probably a combination of both. I mean, Dave was talking about how how near, hardly a day goes by where he doesn't get, uh, you know, somebody tweeting at him or messaging him saying, you know, hashtag save the Clone Wars. So, you know, I'm sure it was a group uh, a group decision over there at Lucasfilm. I mean, they had a lot of people that were involved with that over the years, and I'm sure, you know, they would they were happy to see it uh, come back just because the, the fans have been so loyal for so long. I mean, it, it isn't as if, you know, this show, you know, from 10 years ago, nobody remembers the opposite everybody remembers it so i'm sure they're all happy to be working on it again i know d baker has got to be uh, absolutely thrilled he loved working on that show and he did such a great job playing all the different clones i mean it's going to be really something i want at some point for there to be a reunion picture you ashley Eckstein, d bradley baker uh anybody who's there to come back i would love to see a reunion photo that would be fantastic yeah, we you know we kind of did that once uh, a number of years ago. It was uh, we all were at the um, at the Egyptian Theater in Hollywood. Uh, most of us were, and uh, we were there for the thirty was it thirtieth anniversary screening of Return of the Jedi. And so most of the cast was there, including Sam Witwer. We all lined up on the forecourt of the Egyptian Theater and had a had a a group photo taken. I think it was like the first reunion photo we ever took. Tom Kane was out here from, you know, because he lives out in, in Kansas, and uh, it was great. It was a good time. Now, you're currently voicing the Scarecrow character in the Emmy Award-winning series Lost in Oz on Amazon Prime, where you're also working with uh, a number of colleagues like Nika Futterman, who was Asajj Ventress, Jennifer Hale, who was uh, Ayla Sakura, and Gray Delisle, uh, former Get Your Geek On alumni, who was Padme Amidala. My first question probably should be, is there some kind of secret club where y'all hang out? Because it seems y'all seem to get all these gigs together. But it actually is. Uh, how often do you see the people that you work with? 
Oh, are you talking about a special place like the Ink and Paint Club or something like that? <laughs> so, you know, secret, secret handshake and all that. Yeah. Well, you mean, is, is, you mean, do I see them outside of work, or do you talk, you're talking about do we see each other in the session? I'm not sure. Uh, a little bit of both there. Um, because, it, again, it seems like y'all, y'all work in packs almost. If, if there's uh, Tom Kane, then there's going to be several that go that way, and if there's going to be Stephen Stanton, then there are several that go with you as well. So do y'all see each other a lot both in the studio and outside? Well, in the studio, it's, it really depends on the show, uh, whether or not they record as an ensemble or whether they bring you in separately. Um, and a- every show is different. Lost and Oz, they always record uh, as an ensemble as much as possible. We did that, you know, the same, same kind of thing on The Clone Wars. Uh, on Rebels, uh, not as much. I didn't always go in with the, uh, the cast. And, and a lot of times, really, that has to do with everybody's schedules being so hectic that you, it's hard to get you know a dozen voiceover actors all working on multiple shows and projects and commercials to get their schedules coordinated where they can all be in the same place at the same time it takes a lot of juggling like okay we're gone on for tuesday and then all of a sudden the next day you hear okay actually scrap tuesday we're going to try for thursday and then it'll be like well you know what we're going to try monday of next week you get a lot of that uh a lot of that going on, and you know, as far as you know, outside outside the uh, the studio, we don't see each other that much. Everybody has families, and like I said, busy schedules and uh, kids and things like that. So, to be honest, I think we all see each other the most on the job. That's where we really get a chance to catch up and spend time with one another. Awesome. Now, you were born in Bavaria at a time when we had to describe Germany as either west or east. And then you jumped into the Hollywood industry by working at the Chinese theater. What was that transition like? Well, I didn't. I didn't grow up in Germany. I grew up here in the United States. So you know, I moved to moved to the U.S. at a very early age. I was you know less than a year old. So um, you know, I, I grew up in in Florida actually. So um, transition transitioning transitioning from Florida to California was was pretty easy you know it was like okay california has uh, less mosquitoes less humidity less alligators um you know that was uh, that was a pretty good transition and i had worked in movie theaters you know when i lived in uh, when i lived in florida so i came out here to go to film school first thing i did was try to look for a movie theater to uh, to work at and i remember uh, my roommate and i we moved into a little uh, apartment building uh, right in the middle of hollywood on uh, near hollywood and vine and I thought, well, I better go see if there's any movie theaters in the neighborhood, not really knowing anything about Hollywood. And I just got out on the Hollywood Boulevard and started walking, and it was just there was a movie theater like every block there was a movie theater. So I walked from one end of Hollywood Boulevard to the, to the end, and when I got to the end, there I saw the Grauman's Chinese Theater, and I literally had never seen anything so big and as gorgeous as that. So I walked in and uh, submitted an application for a job and ended up getting it. That's outstanding. Now, you did lose the mosquitoes, but you gained the earthquakes. <laughs> well, you know, we had tornadoes and, and hurricanes in Florida, so I thought it was an even trade. An I mean, even. I was willing to take one with the, for the other. A good swap there, Very. <laughs> That's about yeah, right. Yeah. Now, great writers, they read other authors. Great athletes, they study their competition. What voice actors do you listen to and admire? You know, especially when I was starting out, I was a big fan of a lot of the ensemble casts that you might find on, uh, like, the Stan Freeberg comedy records or any of the Jay Ward animated shows. There's a lot of people, you know, like June Ferre and Bill Scott and, uh, um, you know, Stan Freeberg himself. And I used to listen to a lot of old-time radio, like the Jack Benny show or, you know, Fred Allen Phil Harris and Alice Faye, those kinds of shows. And what was great about it was you had these these character actors like Hans Conried and Phil Harris and, you know, uh, the, all the guest stars that Jack Benny would have on his show. They were really had distinct voices. And, you know, a lot of those people ended up moving into animation. Some of them only did a one particular kind of voice. But uh, those were great people to study because they, especially in, in radio, they learned how to entertain with just the voice alone without having to use the, you know, the, having the camera there to show facial expressions or body movements or anything like that. They had to communicate 
everything just through the voice. So listening to those actors from that time period, that's always been like a, you know, very educational for me. When you did the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars Rebels, did you study any James Arnold Taylor in there? No, they they were asking me specifically to focus on Alec Guinness from the original trilogy. And I had been doing that character for Lucasfilm since about 2004, uh, starting with the, the video games like Battlefront, Battlefront 2, uh, right up to the very end where we did Disney Infinity 3.0. So Old Ben Kenobi was something that I had, uh, I had worked on for a number of years, and they wanted specifically to put that version of the character into Star Wars Rebels. So. So, yeah, my focus was, uh, you know, Alec Guinness. And, you know, we, we use, he even showed up in uh, arcade games like the Star Wars Battle Pod. If, I don't know if you ever played that. That sort of 3D immersive um, game that, uh, you know, puts you into the Star Wars uh, different scenarios out of the Star original trilogy. It was a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, Brian and I hold the top score on the duo for Star Wars Battle Pod at, uh, over at Laser Legend. <laughs> We love no, that game. Kidding. No, it's it's a fantastic game. The first time I played it, you know, I went chasing after the Millennium Falcon. I think I shot it out of the sky in Darth, <laughs> from Darth Vader's Tie Fighter. Now you're working on a pretty big charity event. Can you tell us what you're doing? Well, recently we launched a uh, an autographs for charity website, and uh, what this is is a it's a it's a website where you can. Because I don't do conventions, I really don't do the convention circuit. So uh, we get a lot of requests from fans about uh, autograph pictures. So we decided to put up a, a website that has all the photos that I have of my characters going back to the Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, Rogue One, have the uh, Admiral Arratus action figures on there. They're all available for, for photograph, and uh, all the proceeds go to charity uh, from that website. And so we're going to be tweeting about it, like, you know, once a week just to get the word out there because, you know, it's when you hang your, your shingle out on the Internet, it's, that's a big place. And, you know, if you don't, people don't know where to go, um, you know, they just don't know where to find these things. So uh, we're trying to get the word out and let people know that uh, if they go to uh, stephenstantononline.com they can uh, they can find these photographs and we've got some stuff that's really exclusive back when we were uh, when I was working on the Clone Wars uh, you know we would get uh, we would uh, let's see a particular episode would come out and we'd uh, make the call to Lucasfilm and official picks and say we need to have we'd love to have a scene of like Tarkin and Ahsoka in the jail cell so they would print those out and uh, have them sent to us so a lot of the things that we have are they're you know they're they're out of print and they were hard to find in the first place. So we've got a lot of good things available for fans that really want to, that collect autographs. So these rare items are found at stephenstantononline.com. Did I I got the web address correct? I hope. That's right, and we you know we have links on my my website stephenstanton.com and on Twitter and Facebook. We're pointing people there uh, just so they can so it's easier to find. Excellent, and we'll throw that up on our website and our Facebook page as well so fans can find them. Now, you've done a lot of work other than voice acting, but is there one place you'd like to have a live-action scene at any point in time? Maybe on the set of a MASH episode or I Dream of Genie, or uh, maybe a Star Wars movie scene, uh, maybe even something current like a Marvel movie. Is there one spot you'd like to, to put yourself into a scene? You know, when I think back on one of my favorite shows as a kid that had uh, one of my favorite actors in it, Guy Williams, who was Zorro, and then he did this science fiction series called Lost in Space. And uh, that show with, uh, with uh, you know, the robot and Dr. Smith and Will and, and Guy Williams as uh, Professor Robinson, that's, that's a show I wouldn't mind, uh, wouldn't mind being on. Any particular episode that you would just want to just watch it unfold, go back in time and see it all happen? Um, yeah, a trip through the robot, the one where they, the robot grows to a giant size and uh, they all have to go inside of them to shrink them back down. I'm hoping that they do something like that on the reboot of Lost in Space, which I really enjoyed, the, the Netflix version, uh, because, you know, there's, there's so many opportunities to do, opportunities to do wild, wild stuff with Lost in Space. Anything goes. 
That's true. Absolutely. Anything can go. Uh, I think that's a great way to sum up that particular show. But if you let's uh, circling back, I know we're, we're almost out of time here. And I do want to thank you for, for talking to us here on Freedom 1160 uh, KRDY. If you can sum up your emotional reaction to hearing the Clone Wars is back in one word, what would that one word be? Thrilled. Thrilled. I think that echoes literally millions of people out there right now. That is perfect. All righty, sir. Well, we want to thank you for uh, taking the time to talk to us. You've been a fantastic guest on here with Get Your Geek On, and we want to wish you a very happy, good rest of the day. And we are looking forward to hearing more from you, hopefully back in Clone Wars. Hey, you never know what the future holds. <laughs> perfect. Thank Thanks you, sir. Thanks for having me on the show. You betcha. We're glad you watched this video. We work really hard to put out some great quality content for geeks out there. If you like that video, don't worry about it because there are plenty more out there. You can click right here to find more videos, more interviews, more clips, more fan theories, more of just really everything out there under the sun that we do. But you can also click here and mash that subscribe button because that way you just don't miss it. You get a little ping. You don't have to go digging for anything. We bring the news right to you. Just mash that subscribe button. You're good to go.